Hello and welcome to the Car Care Net channel. So, Toyota and Lexus mass airflows. I get a lot of questions. Should we clean them? Should we replace them? Is this a maintenance item? So, in today's video, we're going to make a dedicated video to the mass airflow sensor. First, how it works. When, sh how should you diagnose one properly? And when should you replace or clean it? Because this is a very delicate sensor. I see a lot of folks actually end up damaging it in the process of trying to clean it. Let's get started and we'll go into everything in detail. Let's start with how things work. And I know some of you will be like, well, I don't care how it works. I just want to clean it and move on with my life. And you're welcome to skip. But it's very important that we know how this works so we understand what are we cleaning and what are we looking at. With Toyota, you're going to have multiple types of mass airflows. There is a very old school one where it had a big door. It's very simple, just the airflow pushes that door and the computer is able to, to have kind of a potentiometer that measures how much air is coming in. That is a very old school stuff, 80s, early 90s. Then comes the most common one, which is actually this one. This went all the way till some cars today still have it, but most of them are switching to the latest type. This is called a hot wire mass airflow which we're gonna heavily focus on because these are the cars that you gotta clean it occasionally. And we'll talk about that. The newest type is kind of a microchip type. Works somewhat similar to this. We'll touch on it briefly, but let's focus on this one. So the mass airflow on Toyotas has two functions. It's not just measuring how much air comes in. It actually measures the air intake temperature. That is also important because the hotter the air coming in, the less dense it is, the less oxygen it has, and the computer needs to compensate for that. The colder air it is, the higher dense, the more dense it is, the more oxygen it has so the computer can compensate for that as well so that's where the temperature and actually if you look at the outside of the sensor most of the time you'll be able to see that intake air temperature sensor just sitting there but the hot wire part is the interesting part so there's a few designs of this and we're kind of going to talk about the general theory of them you have a hot wire most of them are in pairs so one of them is has a heater the other one is kind of the measuring one it also has a heater the computer is going to look at the difference in temperature now they're both heated to the same temperature as airflow passes through them one of them is directly in the path of the airflow it's going to start getting cooled down by the airflow and based on how much is getting cooled down the computer is going to kind of do a calculation and know how much airflow are we getting in and that's how it knows. It's a very simple process. And just before we move on from this section, the newest sensors are different. They will have two temperature sensors and one microchip sensor in the middle. As the air passes through it, they're both also heated, but you have that microchip sensor in the middle. As air passes through the first sensor and the second sensor, it's gonna be able to calculate how much airflow we have. They're a little bit more higher resolution, a little bit more accurate than this style, but this style is the most common one. You're going to see it in almost every single Toyota except the very newest ones. So let's move on to the next section and talk about what happens with this one. Let's talk about what happens with these. Why do we need to clean them or potentially deal with them? So a mass airflow is a vital sensor to the operation of the engine. So this tells the engine how much air is coming in so the computer would know how much to fuel to add to get that perfect mixture so we are emission compliance, top performance, and everything is great. When this sensor, and the technical term sounds a little bit interesting, when the sensor reading is skewed, it's going to throw everything off. If this sensor is telling the computer that we are drawing in less air than we're actually coming in, this computer has no way of knowing how much air is actually going in so we can add that fuel. So you'll start running, and this is what the computer will do when this is reporting wrong, because there is another sensor that picks up, which is the air fuel ratio sensor. It's gonna add fuel. This is saying we got, let's use a hypothetical number, 10 is the volume of air. We're gonna add, five of particles of fuel the hypothetical number here but if the airflow is actually 15 or 20 and this is reading wrong well you just created a lean condition you have more air than fuel it's going to see that in the air fuel ratio sensor it's going to try to compensate and 
eventually he's going to be like, okay, what's going on here? You're telling me something and you're telling me something. Chuck Angelo comes on. We have a problem. Codes are set. And that's basically how a lean code is set. Another problem with these, though, that this is where things are interesting. When the sensor gets dirty over time, I mean, think about it. You have airflow going here. Yes, we have filters. We try to keep them clean, whatever, but some stuff will still get through it. And over time, you're going to build up a film on the hot wire. And you can actually, in some cases, visibly see that film. It's going to be very hard to show you. We're going to try to get some shots of this sensor so you can see it. You're going to visibly see that. And that's how they start to not read properly because that air is supposed to cool that heater as it passes through it it's not going to cool it as much because you already have that thick layer of grime on it that's how these things start to not read accurately now if it's slightly inaccurate you're going to get slightly a leaner mixture the computer will be able to compensate for it but now things are not running right and if you drive your car normally you won't feel it but if you all of a sudden floor it you'll notice it's lacking power and something with Toyota Mass Airflows, when they start to go south, you actually won't set codes because it has no way of checking what's going on with this unless it's completely not reading or reading something astronomical. That's the problem. So let's move into the next section, which is proper diagnosis of a mass airflow. It is vital. So how do you diagnose a faulty mass airflow? See, most DIY mechanics, in their attempt to fix a problem, they start throwing parts. In the automotive industry, it's called parts cannon. This guy is the number one parts cannon part I see in my entire career. Any problem that has to do with lean codes, rough running, whatever, this is the first thing that gets put in the parts cannon. But folks, did you know there's an effective way to actually check these? Here's what you need. You need a capable scan tool, but not the top professional scan tool. You just need a scan tool that has data list that can display data, live data. That's all you need. This could be a cheapo scan tool. It doesn't matter. We are going to look at one key input, which is calculated load. This is, applies to Toyota Lexus, may apply to others, but I'm going to give you the numbers for Toyota Lexus. You'll have two readings for the mass airflow. One of them is actual flow of air, and you can use that, but it's not very accurate, and you're kind of looking at a number bouncing up and down. It's like, is this good, is this not? And they don't give you a spec. But I will give you a spec that is not in the repair manual. Calculated load. Calculated load is a number that is generated based on the input of the mass airflow, and it's a percentage. So when you look at multiple cars, the spec will be different for how much airflow this is reading, but the calculated load is a calculated number based off of that. So here's the specification. When you're at idle, you should see anywhere from 15 to 25, depends. But that's not really an indication of a problem, unless we're at zero. Obviously, at that point, you get a lot of issues. How you test these, fully warm up your car. Go drive it full throttle. I mean, I'm talking pedal to the metal let it downshift and go watch the calculated load of course have someone driving while you're looking at the scan tool you should see the calculated load go to 90 percent 80 basically let's put it 80 to 90 percent very close to 90 actually here's how a mess a bad mass airflow looks like and which is actually this one which we ended up replacing talk about what to do before you replace it this mass airflow was only going to 70%. Now that is not a extreme case. You're going to start seeing noticeable, very easily noticeable degrade in performance when this reads between 50 and 60% calculated load at full throttle. That's when you start noticing the car is kind of lacking power or it actually starts to kind of hesitate at full throttle. That's how you feel. But 70% is not good. Because when you replace this guy, it went straight up to 90 on the same car. That's how you diagnose these. This is a very simple method. You should never, after watching this video, just go and replace a mass airflow. Because if it's reading properly, another thing you want to check is the intake temperature. If it makes sense, the best way to check an intake temperature is check the car cold. What is the ambient temperature? Whatever the ambient temperature should be what this sensor is reading before you start the car when it's cold. If it is, 
then this sensor is good. Because this sensor could also cause a lot of issues, but they're not known to. Let's move to the next section. What can you do before you go to replace it? You don't know. Some of these are expensive. Most of them are not. So a lot will be tempted to just replace it. But I'll tell you two things that you can do before you actually go to replace it. So how do you repair these? And this is, this is something that I will give you a general warning about these. This is an extremely, extremely delicate part. You should handle it with care. Don't drop it. Don't just go dunk it in water and start cleaning. Of course, it's an electronic part, but don't be over the top with cleaning it. That's something you gotta be aware of. So here's the methods of cleaning this guy. And in most of these, when you look inside, you can actually see the filament. You can't reach it. You can't go in with a Q-tip. Don't do that. You gotta know that that little filament, that wire is very delicate. And in, if you stretch it, it's not gonna read right anymore. That's the problem. So the only way to effectively clean these is either electric contact cleaner or brake clean, but not in large amounts. I'd rather use electric contact cleaner. You're gonna spray it on it. It's gonna get that debris loose and you have to use very light air, a compressed air or a little can air, clean it up until you visibly see that that filament is now clean. If it is not, you may have not done much, but remember, we're not looking for perfectly clean. You'll never be able to get into that. But here's the best way to know if you are effective in your cleaning. Don't go cleaning these just because. I really dislike that. I see shops that sell this as a service. Don't do that because you could actually turn a perfectly fine mass airflow into a bad reading one just by simply being too aggressive on the cleaning. So instead of going and cleaning your mass airflow as a maintenance, check it. If you put the calculated load and it's reading properly, we're gonna leave it alone. There's, you're not cleaning anything at that point. If it's not reading properly, then, you, then we're gonna need to do something. Clean it lightly. Clean it once. Spray it. A little bit of compressed air, light, not high pressure, just to kind of that loose debris that you have, you'll, you'll take it out of the, of the wire, stall it back in the car, go retest. If all of a sudden you're reading 60%, now you're reading 70%, we see an improvement. Go back and clean it the second time. If we don't improve beyond the second cleaning, unfortunately, you are not able to clean this guy. Because they're very tricky to clean properly where they read fine. Don't clean it a third time. Because the third time, and this is just from my experience, the third time you clean it, if you are now stuck at 70%, now you're at 40%. They're very delicate, folks. Be careful. If you cannot get your number to be perfect, or it's 85, 90% at full throttle, replace the sensor after the second cleaning is unsuccessful. That's all I'll tell you. This is very important, folks. Folks, I'm gonna repeat a few things right now because it is important. Never clean a mass airflow that is not a hot wire type because the newer ones with the semiconductor, you put any liquid in them, they are done and they are a lot more expensive. Don't clean the new ones. Now the calculated load deal still works on the new ones, but unfortunately the newer style ones, the ones that do not have this shape, they will have more like this shape. Those are the ones you cannot clean effectively and you could very easily damage them. Those do not clean them. If the calculated load method is not accurate, you have to replace them. The old stuff, the ones with the door, you can also test them with a calculated load, but those are very, very sensitive. Do not clean those. Do not put electrical cleaner. They're a lot more complicated and they are known to have issues. So just heads up on that because it's just a door, the top part where it has the, the potentiometer that actually reads. You have to take it apart. Most of them are kind of closed and they're a lot more complicated than this. This is the best type in my opinion. The newer ones, a little bit too delicate, but they work a lot more accurately than this. The old stuff, they're just horrendous. There's no other way to say it. Let's repeat one more time. We're not gonna go do a procedure for no reason. We're not gonna go on that fine weekend when we are DIYing our car 
and we are changing the oil, checking the filters, doing all our beautiful stuff to our car and go just, let me just clean this guy. Do not do that. I have seen so many of these get damaged because the owner is trying to clean them just because. Instead of cleaning them, go take your car for a drive, invest in a small scan tool that can read data, check it. If it's fine, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, folks. That's, I, I see this all the time. The number of one thing that destroys these, sand, heavy dust, and bad air filters. If, and, and believe it or not, in 2024, we have some folks that drive with no air filters. I've seen that too. This will immediately destroy this because you will get everything going in it and you will physically pull it, look inside it, it'll be just full of debris. Don't clean it if you don't have to, folks. This is a very delicate part. Treat it with love, treat it with respect. And best part is diagnosis. You have now a very easy method takes you no more than five minutes to determine with certainty this is a good mass airflow or it's not a good mass airflow. Only if you have a bad air mass airflow or not a good reading is when you go to attempt to repair it. But if it fails, it fails, you go to replace it and we are done. This is a delicate part, folks. Folks, I hope this video was helpful and informative. I hope you learned something new. If you like it, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing to the channel. Check out some other videos. Until the next video, folks, may the Lord bless you and keep you. And you have yourself a wonderful day.